Everyone needs a beautiful, sunlight-filled workspace where they can focus on their work without any distractions. Except that I live in a one-bedroom apartment in downtown New York City where the space is at a premium and a dedicated home office an impossible dream. But is it really? Since I am an architect after all that specialized in office design, this was a challenge that I simply could not ignore. So the room I had to work with is our bedroom. It is 11 by 14 feet, small but again pretty standard for New York City. Now that I'm ungrateful since we used to live in a 400 square foot studio, so this was already a nice step up since I actually get to work in a separate room from my wife. So what I really wanted to create was a dedicated workspace that was visually segregated from the rest of my home. Since one of the greatest challenge is often distraction. There should be a physical barrier so that I can signal that I need some privacy in order for me to concentrate on my work. The equivalent of closing the door to your home office except without actually installing a physical door that is. Now I've seen a lot of interesting convertible tiny apartment projects on the web and as beautiful as they are, there are two problems for us. One is that they're highly customized solution that often require extensive renovation, which isn't really feasible if you rent like us. Second, custom usually means expensive. So as much as I love the chance to design something like that, it won't really fit in our budget. To work around that, I have to create cheap solutions that is also space efficient, and that usually means IKEA which is one of my favorite stores for components as you will see. We first started with improving the efficiency of the bedroom itself. Since we don't have a lot of closet space, we converted one side of the bedroom into a wall-to-wall -wall closet with the IKEA El Varley system, which is consists of these vertical posts supporting horizontal hanger rods. We really like this system because it was cheap and structurally robust, Plus, it took up the least amount of room. Altogether, I think the components we bought from IKEA to put this whole wall together cost us less than $300. Instead of doors, we hung curtains. Again, they were the cheapest and most space efficient solution. They were from IKEA and at $25 for two panels, perfect for our tiny budget. And instead of curtain rods, we went with tension steel cables, which allow for a lot more flexibility and I'll get into a bit more detail later, but they allow us to either keep everything covered up or open it up completely to allow for easier access for reorganization or what have you. This was one of the first DIY modification we built when we first moved in, and five years later, we had been very happy with how well it worked and held up. But you're probably more curious about the convertible bedroom office itself, so let's move on to that. The way this room was painted was probably the most unusual thing we did. We found this color at a coffee shop. In bright sunlight, it actually looked dark blue. And we don't have a backboard for our queen size bed, and the middle section of the painted wall is sort of acting like one. The ceiling was the trickiest part. Usually, it's pretty drastic to have such a dark color on the ceiling, since that can feel a little bit oppressive. But since it is our bedroom, it actually feels pretty cozy. The other reason is that I also wanted to use the changing color to delineate a different zone. It's not too noticeable, but that's where this line of curtain comes into play. So I hung all these curtains with tension steel cables. They offer more flexibility when it comes to layout since all I need are two anchor points at either end of the room to make a line. And with no intermediate support, I can slide the curtain along its entire length. I double them up so I can overlap the curtain panels to make sure that there are no gaps. I bought the steel cables from Home Depot. I need a strong wall anchor, so I made my own. They really aren't anything more than just a T-shaped steel splice plate with one of the arm bend and anchored to the wall with four screws embedded in expansion plastic sleeves just for good measure. There's a cable tensioner to keep the line tight and everything is from Home Depot and costs about $20 altogether. The curtains are again IKEA, they're called Lenda. I like them because they're super basic and cheap. 
and when I pull the curtain closed, it follows the line of division between the light and the dark zone and divide the room into two separate space. Here's my office, and here's the bedroom. I made sure that the curtain is slightly inset so you see a dark outline to further reinforce the definition of this boundary. I kept the office set up intentionally basic both to avoid clutter as well as to make it a little bit easier to take down at the end of the day. This used to be a TV console we had when we were in the studio apartment, again from IKEA. I took the legs off and mounted directly to the wall at the window so high so it can work as a standing high table. We kept our bed sheets in it, leg room is a little bit tight but it's not too bad. Recently I've been working mostly off of my iPad Pro. I have a computer as well but I've been experimenting with minimizing what I need in my workflow to help improve focus and mobility and so far so good. A simplified setup also helped me take down my office at the end of the day more easily, which is important to me because it helped delineate work hours from home hours even though technically we're in the same room. I made this funny window mount out of a car camera mount. This is actually how they mount a camera to the outside of a car for chasing. It has these giant suction cups that work super well on the window and is easy to remove. It also allowed me to change the position of my iPad easily. I can work either standing or seated, but I usually keep it low for writing and research related work and raise it when I need to get on a conference call. There is also a magnetic coupling on the other end of my window mount, which allow me to quickly remove the iPad Pro if I need to do some drawings. And a quick zoom tip, whenever possible, you want your camera at eye level and avoid the staring at the underside of people's chin perspective that is unfortunately not very flattering, but is common with people who had to use the webcam on their laptop. And as you notice, the curtains also act as the perfect video call backdrop and it also does a good job of keeping the bedroom portion segregated on a few occasions my wife had to run in to pick up something doing a call and there hasn't been any issues because of it the lamp I found from a restoration hardware outlet store. I had a habit of keeping a desk lamp in my work area and keeping an arm to help me concentrate. Again, a mental signal when I'm open for business versus closed for the day. Like the hot cup of coffee I kept at my desk in the morning just so I can smell it. Since the goal is to create a space with its own distinct character that your mind will identify and associate with work. So the more cues you're able to supply, the more it'll help even if the setup is not permanent, as in my case. And I requested and received approval from the wife to take over one of her baskets to keep all my office stuff in. So at the end of the day, it's simple to put everything away open up the curtain and we get our bedroom back. Lastly, as an architect and a designer of offices, I just want to say that the space we occupied and worked in really have a surprising amount of impact on not just our emotional state, but also the way we work. Just as a beautiful cathedral, we inspire solemn introspection and a brightly colored theme park inspire festivity. So would the space you're using as your home office affect work? And it's a worthwhile investment to spend a little bit of time to make your workspace a little bit more conducive for work. I hope you enjoyed this video and a tour of my tiny convertible bedroom office. It is still a work in progress. I'll probably continue to experiment and make further modification to it. I have also done some pretty interesting things with other parts of my tiny apartment. So if you enjoyed this video and like to see more, please like this video and subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon to be notified when I release more videos in the future.